the season two European regionals here at the Intel Extreme Masters. Joining me, of course, Mr. Jason Kaplan. And I'm Joe Miller, if you didn't already know. Um, so we've had, as we said, a little bit of a delay coming into bit. this one, but it looks like we are finally ready to get into those picks and bands for game number one. I'm excited to see this one. We heard a little bit from Ocelot there, from uh, Zenon as well on the stage, and some very good points coming out from yeah. both of them about how this game could end up panning out. Uh, and we see we are into the bands already. Alistair being banned out by Moscow 5. Vladimir taken away instantly there for Elo Hell. Yeah, Vladimir seems to always be picked a lot. He just is a really safe top lane. He has that troll pool if you ever try to gank him. Um, he can farm up, be really devastating late game with his ultimate, which you know increases everyone else's damage onto him. Yeah. And he's just really overall annoyed. And now we're seeing a Maokai uh, ban coming out of M5 here. Well, the Maokai actually was played by Elo Hell against Moscow 5 in the group stage at ECC Poland. Uh, so that's where they're going to be aiming. That one, Oriana banned out. That's another pick that we saw at the uh, European Challenger Circuit Poland. Uh, that was played by Alex Itch. Yep. And again, Oriana has become a real favorite these days. That ball, depending on how you set up your team, it's number one incredibly strong on its own but if you get it onto the right person for example a Malphite who's gonna unstoppable force in there it can be a real uh, it can be a real problem in the long run as well so third ban gonna come out here for Moscow 5 and that will be Nocturne they don't want to be dealing with these long-range ganks from his ultimate yeah Nocturne just overall is really annoying he's a really strong aggressive jungler and he just does well as Freak would say tons of damage he really does and uh, like you're saying about Oriana, she is so deadly. You know, like you're saying, throw the ball in Malphite. Not to men mention, if you play a Lulu, like if you have a support Lulu, you pull them all together, knock them right back up, and that's so much downtime they have that they cannot really, you know, get back in there to do anything. And we are seeing a York pick here, and actually is already locked in, which, as we both know, is really annoying in that top lane. Yeah, we all know that Moscow 5 and Darian, obviously in particular, is a very, very strong Yorick player. Final ban was Shen, which doesn't surprise me. The red team, or the purple team, whatever, um, you know, they almost have to ban this Shen out. Um, I'm surprised, in a way, that we've not seen a Malphite ban or a, a first lock in there, but, you know, Moscow 5 are a team that are very comfortable with that Yorick in the lane. And the great thing about the Yorick is when you get to those team fights later on, if your AD carry is strong and yeah. fed, you have two of them. That's true. And uh, actually, we could even see a York bot, like you're just saying, York bot lane. And we are seeing a Nunu's pick coming out of the LOL Hell. And I'm not 100% sure where that Nunu's going. Uh. I mean, Ezreal doesn't really benefit too much off of that attack speed. You know, he's more of a, well, depending on how you build him, like a Trinity Force, he'll be more bursty. But we are seeing that famous Sona to go Gosu Pepper here. And wow, and actually a Gragas lock in too. <laughs> We know yeah, where that's the, going. The Greg has been locked straight in there by Alex Hitchin. Uh, as you said, you know, Nunu, for me, could end up being the jungle. There is the Evelyn pick. That's what we've been yes. expecting to see. We heard that there is possibly something up his sleeve. That is what Shushe yep. played against Ocelot in the lane in that online match. So we were all talking about this Evelyn pick. <laughs> Would it happen? And, well, Shushe not scared to show it here in game number one. Yeah, Ocelot was saying that he lost his lane pretty hard to, to him. Only thing yeah. is, late game, you know, you can't see her, so it's pretty much whenever your team's grouped up, it's like, hey, 5v4, let's just go in. And if she does pick someone off in the back, you know, it's already going to be too late. You already initiated, you have someone dead, and it's pretty much going to be a 5 on 4. Well, the other picks coming out there were Nautilus. So uh, it's going to be Nautilus in the jungle with that Nunu in the bottom lane to support the Ezreal. Obviously, Nautilus, um, I'd say one of the favorite champions in the jungle for, yeah. for players like Shushe. Obviously, he's got a great... Uh, gap closer with that anchor with the dredge line so now uh, he could be very very strong and there is the Lee Sin another champion for Moscow 5 which we know they are very very strong with we know how good Diamond Prox is on this Lee Sin and that's why a lot of a lot of teams will choose to ban out the Lee Sin against Diamond Prox but now there are still 14 seconds maybe he changes in the last dying moments but I really expect that this will be the uh, final choice for Moscow 5 and obviously the Corky which we've seen in the past you know Ezreal a lot of these players leveling that W early, early on. And the core key, he doesn't have to rely on his auto attack so much. He's got the spam ability with his abilities. So that's where this core key comes in nicely against that Ezreal. And, you know, Gossip Pepper on Sona. <laughs> Scary it's times. pretty annoying combo, yeah. And I'm really surprised to see a core key because we saw at ECC Poland, you know, we saw tons of core keys versus Ezreal's, and core key had like an 80% win ratio against Ezreal just because of how you're saying. He does not really affect by attack speed. You build out that Trinity Force, yeah. get that nice bursty damage in, and you really don't even need to be, build attack speed until way later in the game, if any. 
you know, you kind of just build that bloodthirst or that IE, that Trinity Force. Um, maybe even a GA just get tanky, which obviously M5 loves so, the GAs. We, we totally missed this thing as well, but we just assumed new new support in the bottom lane. Um, then they got to pick the owner uh, to go in there with this Ezreal. So we are going to be playing my favorite champion at the moment, which is new new in the top lane. That is an extremely, it, it's hilarious to be honest. The thing is, I talked about this before, we've, we've, I've played this match quite a few times, yeah. obviously. Uh, but Yorick, the great thing about Yorick against Nunu, or Nunu rather as a counter pick to Yorick, is he throws the ghouls out there at you, obviously as a harass, and Nunu has a consume, it's cute, right. which you can take the, goal, uh, the ghouls from that. So, in a way, Yorick almost feeds health back to Nunu at the same time. So that's where they're going to be going with that pick. Uh, for me, a fantastic pick against Darian's uh, Yorick. The question is, though, are Moscow 5 on their comfortable champions? Is that going to be too strong? Because we see that often that some teams will get outpicked, but if they're on their strongest champions that they feel most comfortable with, that yeah. can still give you an edge. And we know, quite frankly, how good Moscow 5 are in every single position. I mean, it's, it's exactly right. You know, if you have Wicked who plays with Aurelia, who's really well known for Aurelia, he can play against his like, ideal counter and still do well, just because you know that champion in and out, and it's really hard to be pushed out of your lane or anything. And I really want to see what's going to happen in this top lane, because as you're saying with uh, Nunu and Yorick, it's that if Yorick can get that little advantage, maybe get that tier a little early, he can afford to keep trying to harass Nunu out of lane. That's, that's the problem I believe you had when you played against him, not to mention you know, someone taking all of your experience. I mean, the fact is that <laughs> I'm definitely not on Kikis' level, that's, that's for true. sure. And obviously Kikis going back into this team, we've seen him uh, in various other tournaments, World Cyber Games, where uh, his MYM team there actually managed to pick up a uh, bronze medal, finishing in the... Uh, in, no, sorry, silver medal, finishing in second. Should probably know that with the Olympics just happening, to be fair. Um, but this ELO Hell team is full of the best Polish players. You know, you've got Shushe in there playing this Evelyn that they have been practicing a lot online. You've got Kikis who obviously feels comfortable enough to bring a new new to the table yeah. uh, in the top lane in the first game of this best of three. Um, and I read a few comments on Twitter and you know on Reddit and things like that. Big shout out to you guys, of course, as always. Um, but this bracket is maybe too brutal. I totally disagree with that. I think that makes every single game in this tournament so cutthroat that it brings even more excitement to the table. You know, you can't mess up. Moscow 5 know that if they let ELO Hell win game number one, they've got a real problem on their hands because ELO Hell, are, you know, they're not a bad team. Okay, they might not have got the results and the, the credibility in terms of land victories and what have you to show like Moscow 5 do, but they're not going to underestimate them. And to be honest, Moscow 5 would be very foolish if they underestimated ELO Hell here. Yeah, I mean, like you're saying, it is single elimination, but that kind of makes the circuit points that they've accumulated throughout the season really worth something. You know, if you have double elimination, it's kind of like, hey, you get knocked out, you can still come back and win, you know, kind of thing. And I really want to kind of talk about the, the team kind of fights we're going to see out of ELO Hell. And it's really, really cool because you have a new, new ultimate to kind of slow them, hold them in. You have Evelyn's ultimate, which as well is an, as, as an AoE. You have Leona to stun him, you have Nautilus to knock him up right after to really allow Nunu to finish his channel, and then the Ezra's ultimate to really put out a lot of, a lot of pressure. They really have a strong team presence if they can really uh, fight on their terms. The one thing that I, I find a little bit worrying though from Moscow 5, you know, Diamond Prox, who feels like he's never missed a queue in his life with these <laughs> Lee Sins. He's absolutely ridiculous. And with, with Lee Sin, you get in the right position, you kick them back. The same goes for Gregus' barrel. In fact, with a kick and a barrel, you can be almost on the enemy nexus by the time you're uh, really finished. So, we're going to get into the game and let's throw it back to the stage for one more time. Like you said, guys, some interesting choices here. Let's see how it all plays out in ELO Hell versus Moscow 5. Moscow 5 versus ELO Hell, first game of this best of three in the first round of the quality or in the uh, playoff bracket here 
at the Season 2 European Regionals. The question that we all want to know is, will we see any early action from either of these two teams? We know that both teams are very, very aggressive and have been aggressive in the past, so there is a possibility to see these Level 1 fights. Obviously, in the last game, Fnatic vs. Curse, we saw a very early fight in that one as well, which definitely can change how things go in the grand scheme of things. Currently, we are seeing Alex Itch here sat in the corner brush. Veggie on Nautilus over on the other side is just going to be walking around. So let's first give you a quick rundown of these two teams and what, we're, uh, what we've got in this one. For Moscow 5, we have Alex Itch on Gragas, Goss and Pepper on Sona, Genja on Corky, Darian on Yorick, and Diamond Prox on Lee Sin. And for Elo Hell, Veggie on Nautilus, Grom on Leona, Shushi on Evelyn, Vanda on Ezreal, and Kikis on Nunu. Yeah, like you were saying, you know, we, we were maybe hoping for some level one action, but, you know, it's a best of three. What's the point in trying to play really aggressive and maybe throw in your entire early game just be, you know, out the window just because of that fight? Um, you know, there's no reason to do that. You just play a little passive, just see how the team's playing, and then if you do lose, you have the chance to, you know, go all out and, and use any kind of strat that we want to see. And we do see a little bit of invade here coming out of Grom, but I don't really think he's going to be able to do too much. Just warding, trying to keep a uh, diamond in their eyes, make sure he doesn't try to do an early gank down at bottom at level two and just kind of, you know, make sure they're safe at bot lane. That was really nicely done there from Diamond. He no, obviously knew that ward came down, it came right on top of his head, and he got the barrel from Gregus to help him start off those raids. Ezreal did try and get in for the steal, but that didn't quite work out. Now we can see that Elo Hell helping their jungler start off this blue buff, giving him a strong leash to make sure this Nautilus is as healthy as possible going through. He won't be using his smite here at the start either, which Diamond Prox has already used on the red buff. Yeah, very smart play. He's going to be able to take that red buff super early. Or he may even go for a, actually a gank pretty early on. Uh, he doesn't have his dredge line yet, so actually he's going to try and invade him. Even though he did see Lee Sin, I believe, go back towards that blue buff. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish here. Maybe, uh, maybe scare Alex Itch a little bit. And I don't think he's actually going to be able to do anything here. And Joe, what do you think all the actions actually going to go down? Because I really want to see this mid lane. Well, I don't know. Alex has actually pushed up quite heavily here as he starts to move in there. Can they get the kill though? No, Alex going to move himself away. But the one thing that's important about that little bit of an exchange there, okay, not too much damage put down at this early stage. However, the flash from Gragas was used, which means the next time Nautilus comes around, he knows that Gragas isn't going to have this flash available, and that will make the gank that much easier for him. Yeah, and look at Diamond being very smart, seeing that Nautilus actually did just get middle and head back down into the jungle. He's going to try taking this red buff here, actually starting out at race, really putting Nautilus behind, which he cannot afford to. He really needs to get that level six just to make his ganks even more deadly. As we look down on this bottom lane, we can see that Nautilus has already started to work his way in. The question is, will he really be offered anything? And then we can see Shoe Shape May fall under pressure and actually will walk back away through the safe side there, down into the bottom brush and stay safe from any possible Lee Sing gank on that bottom side. Bottom lane, of course, Soda, Corky versus Ezreal Leona. And they know that they have to be real careful about this Leona stul uh, stun in the early stages of the game. And the pressure is already there. And Snortilus just saunters on through the middle. No real chance for him to be getting anything. Diamond Prox now is double buffed as we see. Leona actually going in fairly aggressive there onto Genja in that bottom lane. That was, uh, could have been a little bit dangerous. But you know, she's got that stun available. That was in Knight even up in the uh, top lane onto Kikis at this early stage. And um, you can see that he's got two points in his E, two in the Q. Doesn't really need that blue ball. Uh, bl bl blood boil is what I'm trying to get out at this stage. <laughs> of the matchup, but as Diamond comes in again, another Q landing, and that will force this Nunu to back away, maybe even consume on the uh, on the golems there to get himself back to a healthy state. But he's very, very low, and they could end up diving here. They've seen Nautilus coming in, and that should be enough to actually scare them away from this top lane, that Nautilus showing his power there. They don't want to get dragged in back towards that turret after uh, starting to take the hits, and Diamond Prox will back off. There is Ignite as well in the middle onto Shushi, who is out of mana, around about a third of his, heart, uh, of his HP remaining. The question is, can Alex really get in there and finish off a kill like this? Obviously, he doesn't have his ignite to finish off a kill. Also needs to be real careful because of that early flash that was burnt from the gang. Yeah, not to mention, though, he does have his body slam, so if the gang does come in, he can easily dodge that. It's just the dredge line. If you can you know, dodge that, you'd be pretty good. As he actually is going on, Suchet here, he actually might pick up the kill as he does get ignited. Suchet chasing him away. And it looks like Alex Ibs not trying to actually commit, doesn't want to give up that first button and really fall behind against Evelyn, which, you know, you honestly don't see much, so it could really snowball in her favor. Now we see Veggie actually coming around 
from that corner brush. Obviously wants to get in there as we see down at bottom as well. Leona Shield just exploded. Did take a couple of hits, but nothing that they'll be too worried about. There's a pink ward as well inside of the brush. So early map control from Elo Hell. And this is, you know, the poles were some of the first teams that we saw utilizing more pink wards than normal when we were at that World Cyber Games at the end of 2011. Here comes though Nautilus down into this bottom lane. Corky is still very, very healthy. They want to try and get in by the looks of things onto Gosu Pepper, but Genja has gone low. There is the Valkyrie away, but they are going to get in on towards Gosu Pepper. Could this be first blood? There comes the Lee Sin. The Q's collected. And there is the first blood from Lee Sin. They will take down the owner. Great counter gank. Veggie could fall as well. Can they finish it off? There was a flash from Genji. Wow. The final hit from Diamond Props. Two to zero for Moscow Five. And we talked about how good Diamond is on this Lee Sin. And if you give him two kills early on in the game, that's just going to make it so much harder for Elo Health. Not to mention, he's actually coming back for second. So as we see a fight going down in the middle, they're both just, just duking it out. Oh, this could be Ezra. a third one if Diamond can get around. And actually, the minion's just nicely blocking him out there. And Ezreal will escape with basically zero health <laughs> from that situation. So 2-0 it remains. If you look at the gold already, that is a big, big lead for Moscow 5 after uh, just six minutes of this game. Alex Hitch has started to force Shushi away and he knows that he can't really compete with that burst that Gragas can put down from a body slam and the barrel combo. So he needs to be very careful here as we do see Gragas now moving up towards his top lane. Nunu is low on the tower. Shushi does, uh, sorry, uh, Alex does have his ultimate up as well and he is going to throw the wow. barrel in. Great flash from Kikis, but here comes the flash around as well from Veggie. Can they kill uh, Alex now? The problem is that obviously that Nunu is too low to be even thinking about getting involved in the fight. But that flash, absolutely fantastic. Here's Shushi now on the Evelyn as well. Body slam away, but the flash from Shushi. Alex will flash away as well, but with his hate spike running, plus a W from Shushi, surely he'll be able to pick up a kill. No, he goes back as Diamond Prox comes around. And once again, saving his middle lane. The question is, will Shushi activate his passive view before any problems happen? Yes, he will. A fantastic action pack game so far. That was amazing at Veggie. Saving Kiki's life completely right there, coming in to deter. Um, Diamond from doing anything, and Shushe, did you notice what he did? He actually waited for the flash, actually flashed in, waited for the flash, and then popped his speed bo uh, bo boost to actually keep up with him, and he actually almost took him out, which is, it's kind of hilarious to see. I really want to see how it kind of pans out, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad to see no kills going down yet, as both of them were just butting heads so hard. And now we see York actually returning back to lane. He does have that tier, so he's just going to able, or be able to actually harass as much as possible. He's already been doing that a lot to Kiki, he's keeping him really low. I, I'm really curious to see if Kiki's can kind of stick around as his CS is pretty good. And he does have a Phila Stone, so going for that GP10. He does pop that ultimate down on a Darien, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to survive this as he is just running away. He does have that flash up, but if he does need it and he pops it. So now that flash down, and I would love to see a Nautilus gank coming up, maybe around uh, from that tri bush to actually go for a turret dive. But they will be feeding Evelyn Blue here. And uh, Shushe with the blue buff on Evelyn, that's going to be really, really awesome to see. It's going to be scary times for Alex in this middle lane, but that little fight that we just saw at the top, oh, Blue Buff actually resetting itself, that's not quite what Elo Hell were uh, hoping for from that. Uh, Alex just going off to the uh, to the race, but that's the danger of this Nuno at the top. If you're close to him as a Yorick and he pops his ultimate, you're going to really struggle to get out of it if you don't have a flash. And we saw the amount of damage that's already been done with uh, an almost full channel there from that Nunu ultimate. Plus then the E coming out as well. That is really, really dangerous for Yorick in this top lane. I feel that he needs probably a couple more ganks on this top to get that first kill. But we see some action going down here at the bottom. And we are going to wow. see the ultimate coming out from Gosu Pepper. Leona dropping low. Actually use a flash away to get into a safe position. But we are changing down onto Gosu Pepper. There is the kill from Shushi. And that's really what Elo Hell needed now. A kill onto Shuche. There's a dragon taken as well. Ultimate came out from the owner just to uh, stop this Gragas coming in, but he still may have the chance. And we've got action in both ends of this bottom lane. Luckily for Shuche, he's actually stealth up here, I think. Well, they may cut him off. There's the ward. He's coming close enough. Will be spotted. Shuche goes down, and Diamond Prox is now on a killing spree. Three for zero. Riggles Lantern already built up by him. And I tell you what, the great thing is, he feels like he's been in these lanes constantly, yet he is far, far ahead of this Nautilus on CS as well. So fantastic performance um, from Diamond Prox already on Lee Sin, as you know, probably everyone predicted as soon as they saw that pick.
And uh, look at top, actually. Kiki, he's kind of really being pushed out of the lane. He's getting harassed quite a bit. And if you, you do have experience on this. It's kind of really annoying when you do start to fall behind. He does have that GP10 to keep up in gold, but he's just not able to really farm as much because even though it does show he has more CS than York, it is also from his ghouls, which really do feed in that CS counter, giving him no gold. And uh, as we do see Alex Itch actually coming up here for a gank, I don't think Nanos actually did catch him here. And Alex, with his barrel up in 10 seconds, might be able to actually pick up this kill as he does see him crossing by. However, Nautilus coming from behind does get that nice stun onto him as Lee Sin coming in. Veggie getting extremely low with that Ignite on top of him. And that red buff and Ignite will pick up the kill, but now Kiki's with that ultimate from Nudin. Wow. Might be able to... Wow. And that is the perfect thing. <laughs> exactly what you need against a Nunu ultimate. You need an interrupt. And that's what Gragas has just thrown straight in there. Obviously, the channel not quite long enough to get the damage out that they wanted for that kill in the top lane. And Moscow 5 already 4,000 gold in the lead here against Elo Hell. The kills, if we look down the scoreboard, 2 for 0 on the Gragas, 3 0 1 on the Lee Sin as well. And that's just going to help them snowball in this game completely. Over on the other side, if we compare the CS here, 82 for Gragas to the 47 of Evelyn. So you can see that Alex is doing a great job as per usual. I don't really remember many games where you see us was brilliant, but down on the bottom, we're gonna see some action coming in as well. The stun from the owner. There's one back note from Gosu, Pepper and Ezreal now in a lot of trouble. Can he get into the brush before anything further happens? He is gonna come out. There is a kill from Genja. Can they double? Gosu, Pepper is healthy enough to attack the turret here. Lee Sin gonna come around the side. Diamond will actually get the kill in the end as well. And Moscow 5 are looking absolutely on fire in this one. Here is a bit of a meet-up by the race between Shushi and Alexic. Ultimate does come down from uh, Shushi, but he's not quite got the mana here. Nice dodge of the Gragas ultimate with that W pop. There's a flash over, Body Slam comes in, and another kill for Gragas. This time onto Shushi, and it is falling away. I'm not even going to say slowly, <laughs> just surely. Yeah, the CS is really starting to take its toll, as you're saying. Alexic pretty much double Shushi's CS right now. And as you were saying earlier, when we saw that fight down at bottom, Lisa, or, uh, sorry, Ghostu Pepper really never does miss an ultimate on, a, on his Sona, which is quite, uh, nope. quite awesome to see. And look again at top, I mean, Kiki's still under half-life, just from his harass out of York, who's just doing so well at top. I, I really, I, I really don't want to, uh, don't know what Yellow can do to get back in this game. I mean, Evelyn can start to get, you know, snowballed with that DFG when she finishes that. Uh, she'll be able to burst down people extremely quickly, especially with their ultimate. But in terms of CS, they're just overall doing, or just overall really far behind. Yeah, it's fantastic play as well onto uh, onto this new up at the top. Constant harassment. And that's why I say you can use those ghouls, obviously, to heal yourself back up. But at the end of the day, especially now that he's got that two in there, it's just spam, spam, spam constant. And you can't consume fast enough to really deal with that. Here's Diamond trying to pin down Shushi. We are going to see Nautilus come back around from the top side. And that should scare Diamond away. Should scare Diamond away. Not sure if it actually will in the end of things, though. Finally, he does decide to back off. Ezreal Ultimate coming out just for that extra bit of farm before he goes back home to finish his next item. Currently, Double Doran's Blade plus the uh, Berserker Griefs and a Vamp Scepter. But as you say, Kikis is really teetering on the edge in terms of health here. He's constantly under pressure. And Moscow 5, after giving that blue buff over onto Alex Inch's Gragas, are surely going to go in and dive this top lane. I can't see any way that this Nunu is going to escape unless he runs really quickly right now. He's put the uh, blood boil on. Alex Inch is actually waiting. There is the body slam flash coming back. There's the ulti barrel though. And that's one thing you're not getting away from. And I'm not sure if you quite expected that barrel directly after the body slam. That's why he flashed. But well, Alexic using his brain skills there to you know, really wait now. He waited for that flash after the body slam and then went in. Here's Evelyn down at the bottom. Actually, there was the first missed ultimate from Gossip Pepper. And now they are going to push in. Dredge line will land onto Genja. Leona going to come in as well. But, you know, these are the, the kind of abilities that against the fed bottom lane you don't necessarily want to use. You bring yourself closer to trouble. And you see them leave it now with hardly any HP. Here comes Alexic around the side. And uh, Nautilus is still quite healthy. And where are they going to focus their attention? There is Evelyn. They need to switch targets onto Evelyn as quickly as possible. There's a barrel. He just about survives. Darian's sick on the top turret as well in the process. But Alex is still continuing to pressure Veggie here in the bottom lane. Gosu Pepper will have no problem with stealing that kill away from Alex. Alex is already 4 0 1. He doesn't even need it anyway. And that will be another one for Moscow 5. 10 to 1. And look at this. Diamond Prox wanting to get straight in there will actually kick. 
kick it straight through the wall. It's like, you're not going to stop me taking this middle time. I'm going to use my ultimate right now. Kick you straight through the wall. Thank you very much. And not to mention, we're starting to finally see some core items coming out of M5 right now. We've seen Abyssal Scepter coming on Gragas. We even see that Man Immune on Yorick, which, you know, before with just the tier, with not the attack damage from that, he was pushing Kiki's out of lane. But with that, it's going to be even more insane. He did get that top tower in the meantime, so we will start seeing him uh, starting to roam out around a little bit. And we did see Diamond actually picking up the first dragon alone, since he does have that Wriggles. And it looks like they'll be going for the second dragon of the game right here. Yeah, Dragon's obviously uh, on that 15 minutes 24 will be picked up by the spike of Diamond Prox as we see Elo Hell starting to charge their way. Can they get in? There's the dredge line actually landing. Dragon's Barrel will do a bit of damage across the team, but the question is now, where does the initiation come from? Who do you focus on on this Moscow 5 team? And Elo Hell decided not got the positioning, not really got the vision of that high ground to know if Cork is there spamming constantly away onto us, and they decide to back away and not fight for that one. But if we look down how we stand in terms of the gold right now, 10,000 is the difference at 16 minutes. And uh, we talked about this stat in some uh, previous games before that statistically, if you are 10% ahead in gold by the 12 minute mark, 90% of the time you win the game. Yeah, you love that statistic. And it's, I it's like that statistic, true. but what, what's the statistic when you're 10K ahead up to 16 minutes? <laughs> Well, the thing is, Elo Hell has been trying to—I mean, trying to start grouping up and fighting. But the thing is, they can't really win these team fights. They—they they, they cannot keep up the damage that M5 is putting out. You know, Alex Ichu, as you're saying, is 4-0, can just destroy the help uh, help pool of everyone on Elo Hell. But he actually might be meeting up with Shusha here, and I don't believe Shusha can really do anything about it as he just gets demolished by Alex, having to flash over that wall into his own red buff and pop his W to escape. And Alex doing an amazing job. He's been around the map everywhere, multiple times, really helping out his team, really stacking up on those kills, and not to mention, he's still doing pretty well in CS, you know, he can afford to leave like that, because he knows he is ahead of Shushe right now. Yeah, and he knows he's not going to die, I mean, you see him in that position, his flash of capes and all, but you've got the body slam that can get him away, decides even not to bother chasing, actually he's going to roll a barrel over onto Leona, will take the full damage, here comes Diamond Prox, this is a dive from Moscow 5, actually Diamond is going to knock Grum away, but there is the barrel at its full range from Alexic. And 11 1 to the reigning Intel Extreme Masters World Champions. They are just looking so ridiculously strong right now. Now, we talked about if an upset was going to come from Elo L, surely it had to come starting with game number one. But they don't look like they can touch them at this point. Here we go, though. Maybe a big fight coming down as the ultimate from Sona will actually change the tide of it completely. And Moscow might just turn around. They could end up double killing here. There's the ultimate from Ezreal. Will that be enough to force them back? No, not with Greg guys coming in. Oh, there was the ulti barrel. Wrong position. However, the body slam will bring him over. Flash away from Ezreal. And he actually flashed <laughs> <laughs> you still need to come back in there, but Moscow 5 got that one on lockdown anyway. Alexic not going to fall for that one, and that is 13-1. This is not a pretty sight if you're an ELO Hell fan. Yeah, that, that Ezra play was actually pretty good. I mean, he saw his own jungler coming up to help him out. Unfortunately, he just didn't have that health to really survive Alex, and I mean, Alex is just on a rampage. We see Shushe still does not have his DFG completed. We're finally seeing this bottom tower go down. M5 is obviously going to start grouping up and really start forcing things, and to be honest, I really don't think uh, ELO can really compete against that. I mean, you have that Dragon Scroll to separate him, uh, not to mention you have the uh, Ghost or the Sona ult to really force him to be stunned, and then you still have the Yorick ult. I mean, we have yet to see Yorick and Corky in the same area, and with, with uh, Genshin, how fed he is, he has that Trinity Force. He will be, him yeah. and his Ghost will be doing an insane amount of damage. Yeah, this is not one of those games you would expect Moscow 5 to be slipping up on. Of course, we did see that epic comeback CLG yeah, versus Moscow 5 at DreamHack, but I don't think that we're going to see the same here. Actually, Darian is... Oh, wow. Gets out of range of the Nunu ultimate just before it pops. I mean, that's something that you just can't let out. Okay, if he flashes out, that's something different, right? right. Uh, it's hard to time that. But if he's just walking out of it, you should probably hear it when you're sure that he's still going to be inside, especially when you've channeled it for so long. It's still going to do massive amounts of damage. But still, 13 to 1, Moscow 5 not missing a beat. Baron has been up for four and a half minutes, and it looks like it's only going to last those four and a half minutes because Moscow 5 are already on it. Pink Ward down for Vision. There's not even been an Oracle as far as I can recall on this Moscow 5 team up till now. And we are seeing, as you can see on your screen, Elo Hell have no vision of that Baron. They have no idea, and even if they did, they probably couldn't do anything about it. Anyway, Baron is now down to 9.30. There's the ultimate from Ezreal, which 
Actually took it fairly low, but the smite yeah. coming out at the end from Diamond Prox will secure that Baron for Moscow 5. And this is one of those real, you know, job done kind of games. You get into it, you start off with a lead, the mid game's a lead for you. You probably don't even make it into the end game because you're that strong. And here we go, push going in. Diamond will jump into the middle of the fight as well. Veggie is actually maybe not going to even get the chance to get his ultimate off in that one as Moscow 5 is just going to absolutely destroy them. And there are the flashes of Valkyrie from Corky. Can they get the Q off here? Barrel comes in, there's a triple kill for Corky and the Q as well from Lee Sin, 17 to one. And that is four of five taken down. And that will be the first inner turret of this game. They now have no inner turret to uh, defend from here. The inhibitor turret is going to go down. And we've only just hit this 20 minute mark. You can see Nunu there strolling around in the back. It's absolutely nothing he can do. Yeah, and during that fight, we completely saw how far M5 is ahead right now. We, did, we didn't even mention Alex has a, a DFG now. And not to mention his burst before was almost killing people. With that DFG, is that just going to top it off even more, which he, uh, I believe, did use on Nunu and forced him out of the fight and immediately had to flash his diamond going in onto Veggie here. Veggie dropped a really low drop into Darien. The Ezreal ultimate coming through, not doing too much damage, though. And I really want to say M5 is just going to push for the win right now, knowing that they cannot, like, lose a fight. Yeah, they can, they can fight under these turrets at this point as well. I mean, Diamond is tanking the left-hand Nexus turret. Actually, that wasn't uh, Diamond, it was someone else in the team, but either way, it switched to the minions down. We are going to see the second Nexus turret being taken down. Corky having no problems with that one. The question is, will they dive in onto Elo Hell and go for this one final fight right on top of the Nexus? They want to get rid of the minions, first of all, before they do that. And we can see, here we go, push coming around from Alexic. Actually, Grom will come in as well. We did see Shuche manage to get back onto that fountain, but they're damaging the Nexus already. And Moscow 5 wants to win this game right now. Veggie going very low. Diamond will pick up the kill there. Nexus is now on half HP. Shuche will fall down. Genja is dominating. And there is the ulti barrel to knock them away from the fountain. And the Nexus is falling slowly but surely. And Moscow 5 are going to pick up game number one. 21 kills to one. They lost one kill in that one. And Alex is saying, job done. Bring on game two. He looks like they're, he, actually all of them five look like they're really calm right now. They had a 20,000 gold lead basically. Um, looking through the, actually the CS real quick, we see that uh, Alex, who actually in one game we saw not too long ago, he had 600 CS. As, as a Gragas, I believe. He's just sitting there at 165. And that game didn't last long enough for him yeah, to even get near 600 CS. And we see uh, Shushi with 92, so I mean, he was far ahead of him. He just said, hey, well, you know what? I'm gonna just go run around, get some kills. No point in trying to keep up in CS, because I know we're gonna end this game early. So if we think about now game number two, because that one is done and dusted. There's <laughs> not even much to analyze, uh, to analyze from a 21 to one game. Yeah. It's like really not that much to talk about. It's a good start for Moscow 5 and it continues to get stronger and stronger. The traditional snowball effect, that Great. game. Um, there was not really much that they could do. And we will see, Elo Hell, yeah, where do they go now with the bands? We talked about Gosu Pepper and how teams let him have that Sona. Maybe they feel that they don't need to prioritize the support player out when it comes to their bands. But for me, he's an early harasser. He's hit I think there was one ultimate granted that he missed at some point during that game, but that, still, he's a fantastic player on Sona. Um, but Alex just showing once again that it doesn't really matter if he's playing Karthus, Ari, Gragas, I don't know, <laughs> name another five and you've probably got Alex's list of who he can dominate pretty much uh, you know, anyone with uh, from that one. You can see Shushi just signing the uh, slip of paper after each game to sign off on the, tour on the uh, game result. But like, the, it's, it's, I mean, that is demotivating, number one. If you lose in a close game, you still feel like you've taken something from it and you can build on that in the next game and maybe overturn the points that were wrong and you know, turn it into something better. When you lose after 22 minutes here on a, in a tournament like this, you get one kill, uh, which was obviously the one on uh, Shushi, on Evelyn. They must be speechless. I mean, you can see they look pretty speechless. I'm not sure that they know where to build from this because Moscow 5 are one of those teams that if you ban out their main champs they've got a second and a third and a fourth <laughs> round just to keep going with and we talked about how they were the favorite for this tournament they're the reigning intellectual masters world championships they've only ever lost one tournament final out of every single one that they've been in where they finished second and right now I don't think Elo Hell can stop them I really don't yeah they're looking really good and 
I think as you're saying, you know, who can you really ban out? And the problem that uh, entire game was Alex, his, his ability to roam around and put pressure in every lane uh, just worked out really well for them. And it looks like we actually are getting into the next game here really soon. And I hope you guys stay tuned because I'm excited to see. I mean, even though it was a stomp, it still was a pretty good game to see. Yeah, it was a good exhibition, let's say, from Moscow 5. They didn't really miss a beat. Uh, Elo Hell, hopefully they've learned some things. This Evelyn didn't really cause any problems for Moscow 5 at all. You know, I really want to say early on it did. I mean, we saw against uh, Alex, he was doing really well. They were both you know, getting pretty low. The problem is, is that he yeah, wasn't able to keep up in CS to really roam around and do the damage Alex was. He accumulated four kills before uh, Shusha, I believe, even got one. And they have that kind of team setup as well that Elo Hell is. When you fall behind, you really fall behind. Right. Because your initiation, you know, the Nautilus, Paul and Leona, your, if you attack the bottom line, lane like we saw so many times, and they're so much stronger than you, basically you're just suiciding into them there. You can't really do enough damage um, and get away from the damage that Moscow 5 were putting out there. So that was a really bad setup for ELO Hell in terms of you know, how the game could snowball against them. Yeah, the thing in bot lane, like you were just saying, they fell behind, and that's the thing. If you run an aggressive bot lane and you fall behind, you can't engage. Every time we saw Leona engage, he would be dropped down to half health immediately. And then he would be just running away for his life the entire time. Even when Nautilus was there, they were still focusing down extremely easily. I mean, even that top lane we saw, York against Nunu, I mean, we didn't see much action top. We saw a couple of early uh, skirmishes coming up there, but still, Kiki just fell behind in terms of keeping up with healing and with Yorick's damage. Yorick was able to just harass him out. He got that tier and then had that man immune as well to just really kill him if he really wanted to. Yeah, and for me, Nautilus wasn't really that instrumental in, in really anything there. I mean, the top yeah. lane we saw, Nunu was getting harassed and harassed and harassed and co constantly during the game. Nautilus wasn't really there much, to be quite honest with you. He didn't spend too much time in his top lane to try and figure, uh, you know, to try and help his teammate out. It was just generally, for me, 100% Moscow 5, and they just happened to be playing against Elo Hell rather than you know, any other name that you could pull out of the bag. <laughs> uh, because they looked that strong, they didn't do anything wrong. Well, so, we're gonna go onto the stage here. Rachel is once again up there for an interview. I can't quite see who, but over to you, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. We have here the winner of the audience bet. Introduce yourself once again to everyone, please. Your name? My name is Eugene. I'm from Germany, but i born in Russia. And you chose M5. Why did you choose them? M5 is the best team in the world. I love them. I like to see them play. Well, you, sir, are going to win this shirt here. Are you actually a carry? Do you play a carry in the game? Yes. I play solo mid. Excellent. Here you are, sir, your shirt. Hopefully the guys of M5 might be kind enough to autograph that for you. Congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause for his excellent choice. Nice job. Thank you, sir. You can head out. And I actually want to bring out Frederick of Elo Hell. Frederick, come on out. Hello, sir. Now, would you like to uh, introduce yourself to everyone out there? Hi, I'm Frederick Veggie Kojo, and I play jungle for uh, Team Elo Hell. Excellent. Now, in that last game there, we saw some interesting choices for you guys in, as far as champions. Do you want to walk us through uh, how that strategy was supposed to play out? It was supposed to play out um, that Diamond would play just like he put, used to play lately, so that he would just farm his jungle. The plan was to take every Wraith camp from the enemy. Uh, thing is, Diamond did exactly what I thought he would do before the game. He uh, just ignored us and just went our red. So I exchanged their Wraith for my red, which wasn't really worth it. And apart from that, of course, uh, he counter ganks every, every uh, gank I do. So with Nautilus, that's kind of bad. So pretty much everything lost, other than maybe top was even. So it didn't turn out like we thought it would, but that's in five and we've been playing for a month and we have a substitute. So we haven't had that much time to train this tactic. Were you guys feeling confident going to the next game? Are you gonna rock this? We're not feeling confident, but we'll still play the best we can. And I hope we'll give a better show than this, uh, the, this time. Uh, we have another tactic where we might try. We'll see how it turns out now. Maybe that tactic was just bad, flawed. Uh, we'll see what happens now. 
Well, I hope you guys can make it to a game three. I'd love to see some more League of Legends today. I'll let you get back to the booth and get warmed up for the next round. And I'm going to hand it back to Jason, but, but, but I love you, Kaplan, and Joe, Joe Miller Miller. Thanks. This best out of three from Curse. Curse, however, not giving up. They are continuously warning. They are not forgetting the little things. They have wards towards Baron for the next one. And they have wards on the race for any escape towards the dragon who may be taken after a team fight. They are ready to counter initiate on these fights. Yeah, and you're seeing the great code here from Fnatic. You mentioned it in Chance Select.